Hey, I'm Gaur, I'm a freelance colorist and digital developer, and in this one I'm going to show you my saturation shaper. So this tool allows you to take your image and make it less saturated, or turn up the vibrance. Well, I'll show you how it works in practice. This time we're in Fusion, so we'd have access to the 3D cube to see how the tool manipulates the whole cube. Well, and if you're looking at all my nodes, being a bit intimidated by them, then don't worry, we only need to know about the top ones, which is my color management, as I usually have it set up in nodes with two color space transforms. And in the middle, I have the DCTL. On the bottom, I have everything that's needed to have the cube. Well, so this is the DCTL itself. It has a density, max saturation and vibrance section, and then a way of deselecting certain hues. And at the bottom we have our usual bypass, with different options to disable only certain parts of the tool, then a way of visualizing which parts we are masking out using the hue selection, and then the apply selection toggles, which allows you to specify which parts of the tool the hue selection is being applied to. And finally, our vibrance curve. By default, it's flat, but when we start adding vibrance, you can see it starts moving up. So what is this graph? It defines which saturated colors are moved and how much. So on the left side, we have neutrals, like whites, blacks and greys, and on the right side we have the most saturated colors in the image. And if we look at a cube, we can get an idea of what's happening. So in the middle we have our grey diagonal with everything that is not saturated at all, and on the edges we have the most saturated colors. And if I move the vibrant strength back and forth, we can see that colors in the middle are moving towards the outside, though the middle gray line stays put. And how many colors stay put in the middle are defined by this curve you can change using threshold, curvature, and if you just want to block out certain neutral colors completely, then you have the ceiling, but as it is quite harsh, I wouldn't use it, usually. So we can find a nice place where our neutrals aren't being affected that much. If I bring it to the extreme, you can see even the neutrals are being saturated quite a lot and we have a complete hole in our cube. But if I bring it back, we can see that the neutrals are staying put quite well. And of course, this isn't the strength I would use the effect with, so I'll hide the vibrance curve, and in this case, if I want to use it just as normal saturation, I'll bring it down to a level I like. So something like this. Or another possibility is increasing it way beyond where I'd actually have it, and then decreasing the saturation. What this gives you is pastel colors. So if I bypass it, okay, let's go a bit farther, just as a test to not move the skin tone too much. But as you can see, the reds and blues are being affected quite a bit. I'd say maybe I wouldn't go this far, but in this direction, absolutely. And maybe just add a bit of density at the end. So let's go, as always, I go too far, and then bring it back to a level I like. And then we have the hue selection. In this case, I wouldn't actually use it, but if you want to not affect certain hues, then you have the possibility. Well, there you go. If you like what you saw, you can find a link down below, and if you have any feedback, I'd love to read that from the comment section. Well, see you next time.